Film Festival, and uh, it's all about you, really. It really is. And um, you having fun so far? Yeah. And who, who, was, who was here at a screening already at the, the Paramount in the last day or two? Forgot I won't repeat myself. Um, too much. <laughs> but you know, the festival goes for nine days, and we've got we've got ten bits. Venues, 11 screens. We're showing films from 11 in the morning through midnight shows. We have the work is so exciting this year. There's so much different kinds of work. So we just thank you for turning out, and we encourage you to see as much as you can. Um, we have great systems for people getting in all sorts of ways, and, and just uh, we, we thank you for that, and we encourage you to really immerse. Um, well, you know, we knew we wanted this movie when we heard it was being made. I mean, we, you know, fans of the show, really fans of, of exploring and changing mediums and kind of, you know, taking something great from one form to another, love the Kickstarter element of this film and the, and the, the fan base kind of really reaching out for something that meant so much to them. And just, you know, we, we had our sights set on it early on and were over the moon that we could bring this film, the world premiere of Veronica Mars, to share with them. First of all, we'd like to thank South by Southwest for having us here. Austin is my home, and this is the place I would have picked to, to screen it. Uh, next, I really want to thank the people of Warner Brothers. Just so you know, the easiest answer uh, for a big corporation to give is no. And Warner Brothers said yes. Uh, Warner Brothers let us try this experiment. And we're so grateful. I can't tell you how well they have treated us for being such a small movie. They have treated us like uh, a, a really important project. Uh, next, uh, I want to thank the cast of Veronica Mars. <laughs> for being willing to jump back into this, for working for scale, and, and most importantly, uh, this movie would not exist if Kristen Bell had not been enthusiastic about it, had not been passionate about it, had not been willing to step up uh, ever since we went off the air. Kristen, thank you so much. And then finally, and most importantly, and I think I can say this more than any other movie that's ever been made, Thank you to the fans of Veronica Mars. Thank you to the Kickstarter backers. We would not exist without you. This was the only way this movie was going to uh, get made. Uh, so thank you so much. I hope you enjoy the movie. Hey, Rebecca Feldman, I'm one of the programmers here, the head of media relations. All right, come on, Marshmallows. Was not that what we wanted to say? Let's start with uh, Percy Dags. Yeah. 
Well, I'm going to start with Kristen. How did it feel for you to see all these fans reacting to what you worked so hard for seven years to bring back the stream? It's thrilling. <laughs> it's thrilling. We're honestly so, um, this is such an extra special experience uh, because it's so humbling to know that the reason we're here is because of you guys and because of all of our Kickstarter friends. And we don't... Um, we don't take that on lightly that you guys are the reason and the financial reason that the movie got made. So we're just, um, we're really, really flattered and overjoyed to be here. We hope, we really hope you liked it. You liked it. I'm working on the book right now, <laughs> the book for the musical. He's only one man, guys. <laughs> Very nice question. Malcolm? You're not shy? What's going on? Okay, wait a minute, Malcolm. Was it really natural to be together after so many years apart? Was it natural for everyone to get back together after so many years apart? Completely unnatural. <laughs> <laughs> the end. <laughs> hey, um, you know, we... It, it had to be. Um, when we, uh, for six million dollars, we shot an incredibly ambitious film. And what that meant was, I mean, there are smart ways to do a six million dollar film, and this was not it. You know, six million dollars, you should shoot like four locations and eight actors and not hundreds of extras. But we bit off a huge movie. I mean, 60 speaking roles and 35 locations and action pieces. And the only way that we could make that work uh, was by giving the actors about three takes per scene. Um, we I had to one. fly. I got one. <laughs> <laughs> or occasionally one take. Um, and so they had to fall right back into it. There's no way we could have done this movie if they were all learning again how to do it. It felt great on a personal level, and then they just fell right back into the roles. Uh, it was. Uh, it was wonderful to watch. How about some of the cast? How did it feel for you guys? Because that's Chris Lowe, we know. Chris. <laughs> I have nothing. I, no, I, 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 I'm just shocked that I'm even on the stage or in the film. I thought I was going to have to be the $10,000 backer to be on the speaking part. So, thank you. I just happened to be. what you guys should answer what it was like. Kristen? I love you guys. I mean, it's awesome. There's no other way to put it. We love each other, and a lot of us have kept in touch, um, and mostly via email because of busy schedules. So to get to spend 24 straight days with these knuckleheads is a real treat. I would like to ask a question. Did anyone have to change their pants yesterday? <laughs> Oh, Jason Dora. <laughs> okay, who else has a question? Who's that? Okay, right there. The question is, she was relatively young when she saw the show, and it made her feel okay to feel like a smart, sassy teenager, and that was intelligent, and that was important, and so where did that come from, Rob, and uh, Kristen, how did it feel to play that? Um, I was, I taught high school for many years uh, after I graduated from college, and I was the high school journalism advisor, so I advised the newspaper and the yearbook. And when you advise a yearbook class, it's mostly girls in a yearbook class. And uh, of course, yearbook, they're working before school and after school and on weekends. And I became like wallpaper to them. They forgot I was there. And I felt like for five years, I got a crash course on how teenage girls think and talk. And to me, the, the, the best thing about Veronica, the thing that made that character special, and in listening to those girls, it's such a it's a time period of being self-conscious, of of being worried about 
what other people think about you or what some cute guy thinks about you. And um, and I think, you know, other girls on television, uh, like Buffy or on um, Alias, they could literally kick ass. I felt like Veronica's superpower should be that she just doesn't give a shit about what other people <laughs> think about her. That she would be the smartest person in the room, and that her day wouldn't be ruled by what some guy thought of her outfit. Um, so I hope that that has resonated. I think they, they often say that a writer's uh, protagonist is his alter ego, and I think I speak for all of us in saying, Rob, I'm so grateful that your alter ego is a teenage girl. <laughs> Articulate why and I, I thought this project was special. I was an, a struggling actor when I booked it, and I, I said yes. To, I, I chose the part because I booked the part, um, and I wanted a job. And I'm so grateful that this is the. He's not an actor. Uh, I'm so grateful that this is the project that I feel kind of has defined me in many ways, and I love Veronica as much as anyone else because she's this weird paradox of confidence and vulnerability and that's just, everybody feels that way so often. So it's, he's written like maybe the most, the coolest, most relatable character ever. Thanks, Rob. seven years I've had many versions of the movie in my head like every couple of years I felt like I had to change it as Kristen Bell grew older so did the ideas in my <laughs> So, you know, at one point, like, when there was a shot we could make the movie about three years after we can uh, were canceled, it was, Veronica was a senior in college, and it was a college spring break thing, and, you know, and, I, and I've always toyed, as I think all of you know, with the idea of Veronica going to the FBI, and, um, and that was even something that I was considering, you know, in the last couple of years, uh, but when it became a fan-funded movie, um, here's the thing, I wanted, I wanted, there's, everyone up here has fans, people who love these actors in the show, and I couldn't figure out a way to do an FBI one that rolled all of these characters into the show, and so uh, I landed on an idea of Veronica going back to Neptune, putting the 10-year reunion as a, as a set piece in the middle of it, because I wanted to give the people what they wanted, and honestly, <laughs> I am Veronica Mars fan. I wanted to work with all these actors and, and find a natural way to roll them. So that scene that you guys saw when I came in and I turned the projector off, um, I'm really pretty pretty easy going on set. But when Rob saw me, it was about 2:30 in the morning, and it was time to shoot that scene. And it was just one eight. It was 2:30 in the morning, and I uh, I came to set and I just I was just had this mean mug on my face. And Rob came to see me, put his hand on my shoulder, said, "Please hurry." Are you okay? You okay. said, Rob, I just got a bad phone call, man. Let's just shoot this shit. I gotta get out of here. Let's go. And so we go in, and we had to set him up, me and Ben and everyone else. So we got in there, and I went, and I grabbed a something similar to a tire iron. And on the first take, I just went out there and went, went crazy on that project. <laughs> I smashed it up really good, and Rob just stood there, and he had absolutely no reaction at all. And he just said, okay. <laughs> we had him back up. <laughs> I, I honestly was sitting there thinking, I don't think we have a backup projector. <laughs> Can we use that tape? <laughs> it was the most shut. I know I had no, I could not process it. Uh, Percy's always in a good mood. And he came in with a baseball bat and just started wailing on the projector. <laughs> and then I noticed everyone was looking at me with these little smiles on their faces. <laughs> Tina, Francis, do you guys have any 
moment that stuck out? Seeing these guys again is, is the biggest memory, man. Just getting to, you know, work with them again was just, for me, just an unbelievable experience, man. We never thought it was going to happen so soon, and, and, and we, can, we can't thank you guys enough for bringing us back together. I know we all wanted it so bad. I think we can all say it soon enough. All right, let's hear it one more time.